In this video, I'm going to walk you through the Alex problem assigning oxidation numbers. A couple of things to keep in mind before we get started. The oxidation number of an oxygen atom is almost always minus 2. For hydrogen atoms, the oxidation number is almost always a plus 1. And then last but not least, the sum of all the oxidation numbers, uh, whether it's a uh, ion, a polyatomic ion, a uh, molecule, etc. The sum of all the oxidation numbers needs to add up to the overall or total charge of that compound, polyatomic ion, whatever it is. Let's take a look at what we're working with in this problem. You're going to get four different things. It's going to be a variety of ions, polyatomic ions, molecules, compounds, etc. If you have, like we're looking at this very first example, if you have a monatomic ion, that means monatomic means one atom, and ion, of course, you know, means charged. So if you have a monatomic ion, one, one atom all by itself, the oxidation number is the charge of that ion. So if we had something like Na+, the oxidation number would be plus one. If you had something like S2-, minus, the oxidation number would be minus, <laughs> minus two. One thing to keep in mind when you're entering these into Alex, when we're writing charges, we write the magnitude first and the sign second, but when we're writing oxidation numbers, we write the sign first and the magnitude second. So make sure you get them in the right order. Um, for the next one, this is where we have a polyatomic ion. The highlighted atom is oxygen, and the oxidation number of oxygen is minus two. So that's pretty easy. For this next one, we have a molecule, Br2. For a molecule that has only one type of atom, such as Br2, or this could also be Cl2, this could be O2, could be N2, all I can think of are diatomic things. I can't think of anything with three. Um, for all of these, the oxidation number is always going to be zero. Uh, remember that the sum of all the oxidation numbers has to add up to the overall charge. In addition to that, every atom has to have this, every atom of the same type has to have the same oxidation number. So all the bromines have to have the exa exact same oxidation number, whatever their oxidation number might be, and uh, it has to add up to zero. And mathematically, the only way that's possible is if it is zero. Let me kind of write an equation out uh, that would show us that. We have two bromine atoms, their oxidation number, we're just going to say x, whatever it might be. Two times x has to equal zero, so the only thing that works here is x equals zero. Now this one down here, this one is a little bit trickier. Um, we're trying to figure out the oxidation number of the nitrogen. The only thing that we can say for sure is that the oxygen atom has an oxidation number of a minus two. We know that for sure. There are three oxygen atoms, and so altogether, all the oxygen atoms have a total oxidation number of minus six. Now potassium is one of those monatomic ions. I guess I could add that to the list. Um, its oxidation number is a plus one. We know that just because of the charge that it normally has. And then the rules tell us that the sum of all the oxidation numbers has to add up to the overall charge. So whatever the oxidation number is for the nitrogen atom, whatever it might be, plus one for the potassium, and minus six for all three of those oxygen atoms together, and the oxidation number of this nitrogen, whatever it might be, has to add up to zero, which is the overall charge for this particular compound. So we can do some clever math here, and we can figure out that the charge, the oxidation number on the nitrogen atom has to equal plus five in order for this whole thing to work out to a zero.